Big thanks to Bluefin Distribution for sending this out. Check them out and links to buy in the description. Kaiju, Turtles, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven Stoy Reviews. Hello there, collectors. It is Steven here, and welcome to another MCU SH Figure Arts review, where today we're going to be taking a look at another release in the SH Figure Arts lineup that actually celebrates the movie The Avengers. We're going to be taking a look at Thor Avengers Assemble Edition. Something about the year 2021 and the Avengers, I don't know, but now we have a release of Thor, which is going to be accurate to his appearance in the movie The Avengers. Surprisingly, we haven't had an Avengers Figure Arts Thor release yet, and now we have the chance to add that iconic appearance of Thor onto the shelf. Now, I say iconic because Avengers was a blockbuster movie, plenty of folks saw it, and this may be the entry point for collectors new and old alike to finally have a Thor Figure Arts on the shelf. Now, with that being said, this Thor here does borrow from technology that is used in action figures today and also some parts that have been used in figures from a few releases ago. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, there are some differences in articulation and paint application technology. So let's take a closer look at this figure to see whether or not Thor is worth adding into your collection. I must say Bandai has come a very long way with the dot matrix face printing technology from the early releases of the Avengers figures. And I have to say the actor likeness here for Mr. Emsworth is good. Good for both of the head sculpts that we're going to get. I do feel that the default one, however, is a bit stronger than the other one that we're going to have where he's looking off to his right hand side. But we'll take a look at that a bit closer when we get to the accessories. When it comes to paint, generally speaking, Silver and gold, more so gold, can be relatively difficult. However, here, the silver that is used on his armor for the torso, it looks great. There's no bubbles. There's no other stuff that may be hidden in like bristles or hairs. It looks good. And we do have a nice mixture of red that's going to be on the legs and blue used uh, all throughout the body. Especially when we take a look at his arms, we do have netting or I guess chainmail, not quite sure what you would call that, that is going to be used on the biceps and a little bit on the forearms that is going to be utilized very well alongside the gauntlets on his forearms. Then we take a look at the cape, which looks very nice, including the rather well-worked-in stitching when it comes to the ends of his cape. Now, I do remember how some of the older Thors looked in terms of the paint application for the hair. I know we're not taking a look at it right now, but... I'm just going to go ahead and say it looks very, very good. And Thor's great. I mean, if you want a nice Avengers accurate Thor, I would say that this is a good representation of Thor during that time frame. That was phase one, right? Yeah, pretty good. All right, Thor's articulation. Um, Unfortunately, he is not going to be super duper hyper articulated like some of the other Avengers that are out there. But if you really do know how to pose your figures, you have enough to work with here to make him look pretty dang fun. So what do we have? Well, first, let's actually take a look to see what's going on here. Um, His head is going to plug into a ball joint, so this way you can move it around. But do take note, he does have some luscious hair, (laughs) so much so that it has its own individual sculpt. And then you can see that is a barbell style or double axis ball joint that sits into the neck. So with all of that hair, it is going to block him a little bit from looking up and down thanks to just that ball joint there. Um, Turning from side to side, that's not an issue. But then we do have the neck sculpt here that does plug into the body and we do get some more movement. So looking down, not really an issue. Looking up, eh, not, not, not so great, but looking from side to side is fine. He can rock forward and back. That's all good. Shoulders are going to be on ball joints. This way we can rock them around and move them. Uh, Do take note, he does have his nice armor here that comes up sort of at a V. So whenever you do push his arms up, they are going to sort of go out a little bit of an angle. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, we do have little um, swivels here or hinges, I guess, that would allow you to move Thor's arms up just like that. So we do have no restricted movement there. Isn't that great? Yes, yes it is. 
Also, kind of gave it away, we do have shoulder hinges, so this way we can get him to T-pose with no problem. Much like Captain America, who was released alongside him, you're going to notice there's no cut for a bicep swivel. That's because the way that the shoulder joint plugs in, that swivel is actually going to be plugged in about right here. It can be relatively difficult to move if you're not used to this style of joint, but we do get a little bit of rotation there, so that is pretty solid. Now, Thor is going to come with a single elbow hinge, and that is going to be the range of movement there. Though, do take note, we can get an elbow swivel, which is pretty cool. Wrists are going to be your usual figure art style, where we are going to have a peg into the forearm, a hinge, and then the hands are going to plug in on a ball joint. So we're going to get some pretty decent movement, and those gauntlets aren't really going to interfere with any sort of range of movement at all. Now, when it comes to the main body, you can see that this armor is going to cause a little bit of an issue with movement, especially when we move them forward and back. They did take note of this, and they accommodated this for sculpt with a few cutaways here, but it's not going to really help out too, too much with moving forward and back. Rocking from side to side, eh, a little bit, but twisting and turning, that's where it really comes into shine, so not really restricted there. However, the waist joint really kicks in and helps out with that so we don't have any issue moving Thor forward or back rocking from side to side um, that's probably it's going to be the weakest point here but overall Thor can handle it just fine so yes he can look up with no issues now when it comes down to the hips we are using the 1.0 style figure arch joints so we can drop down and when we factor that into consideration we can kick out about that far forward and that far back he does have his booty sculpt so we can push it back up we are kicking out about that far forward and that far back do take note that for Thor uh, those pockets I don't know what they are um, they are sculpted so when you go to move his legs forward they do want to sort of rub into his pelvis area so just keep that in mind pull down a little bit and you'll avoid any sort of paint rub. Thor is using single hinge knees, so we're going to get that much range of movement. Do we have any sort of movement out of them? No, unfortunately not. There's no hidden swivel in there. Now, for the ankles, um, it does look like we are using a barbell style uh, ankle joints there, so double access ball joints. So we can twist and turn his ankles, but his boots do overlap there, it's sort of like a a little bit of a lip so we can't really twist and turn from side to side and we get a little bit of ankle rocker movement not overly too much and we do have one toe hinge on each foot because we couldn't have more than one toe hinge right right now what's really cool for this release is that we have one cape just one and that cape is going to feature wiring in it so we can crumple it up like that we can kind of get it flowing a little bit yeah, so we have wiring in the cape, which is pretty cool. Now that wiring um, is going to go all the way around the edges and around the bottom, and it actually feels like it's connected, so that's pretty cool. And you can actually see the stitching here, which I showed earlier, um, that in closes the wiring. So overall, for Thor, are we going to get him into some fun poses? You bet. You just have to work towards it. There's a lot of accommodation here in the sculpt to really bring out the best in Thor, and uh, it's all up to you to make him look good. Now, one of the things that I will note is that this Thor had one minor quality control issue for me. I feel like this hip was just a little bit loose. However, one dab of floor polish with future in it, no issues whatsoever. Thor's just fine. So overall, for this particular unit, one small little issue for me, but overall, he is just fine. Time to take a look at the accessories, and though Thor may be a little bit light on the accessories compared to the Captain America and Iron Man that he was released alongside with, I would say, relatively speaking, he comes with everything that would be essential. He's going to come with an alternate faceplate, Mjolnir, in several different variations, I can't pronounce that to save my life, and alternate hand parts. One criticism we'll take a look at in just a second. So for that alternate faceplate, it's going to be Thor looking off to the right hand side. So while that is very good for some folks, maybe they would want looking right and left. But considering that we're going to have parts for Thor to hold Mjolnir in his right hand, which this is going to be the criticism in only his right hand, it is very fitting. So depending on how you want to go ahead and pose your Thor, this is very good. Now, he's going to come with his default hammer without any sort of effect on it. So this way, if you want to pose him, maybe charging up or getting ready to attack an enemy, this is going to be good for you. Now, the detailing on the hammer is good, especially when we take a look at the one hammer that is interchangeable 
with the lightning bolt effect that is on it. Now, it is promoted with the thunderbolt coming from the back of the hammer. However, you can go ahead and switch that because of the way that it pegs in. So this way it is going off the front of it, almost like he's getting it charged up from the sky or maybe he's hitting an enemy with that actual bolt. I mean, it's fantasy, so you can go ahead and make it up as you go along. It's yours. You can do what you like. Then he is going to come up with a spin effect part. So this way you can have it in the right hand and he's spinning it up. So this way maybe he's going to go flying or he's going to charge at an enemy. Whatever the case may be, it is up to you. Thor is also going to come with splayed hands. So this way you can have him posed however you would like. And that is going to be it for Thor. So in terms of accessories, he comes with the essentials. He comes with fists, splayed hands, a few different effect parts for Mjolnir, for the hammer. And the only thing that I would like to see is going to be left and right hand parts. So this way he can utilize hammer effects. But at the same time, I do think that he mostly only holds the hammer in the right hand. So it's going to be up to you whether or not that's going to be an issue. Now, Thor does not come with a thunder lightning effect, whichever you would prefer to call it. Uh, like Pokemon, the move is thunder. Thunderbolt, Thundershock, but it's lightning, whatever. If you are looking for more effect parts, you know I have videos to help you out in your quest. And to round out the review, here's going to be a size comparison with all of the Avengers figures that came out at the same time. So this way you get a good idea of how they're all going to scale, not only with each other, but with some other figures you might have on the shelf. So, buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Thor looks very good with well-executed paint applications, and the accessories fit the character just well enough. When it comes to articulation, he doesn't necessarily move as well as some of the other figures that he was released with. However, he is able to strike some very nice poses if you are able to work the joints well enough. Overall, I would have to say if you're a fan of Thor and you need just a general good representation of Thor in your collection, this is definitely one to consider picking up if you are a big fan of Thor. The price tag may not necessarily be in everyone's favor, but if you do get it, you should be pleased with your purchase. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up, thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand-selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand-selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.